Are we live? I do believe we are live. Wow. Not as anybody watching at this moment in time, but they will be soon, hopefully. Bet your bottom dollar that as soon as people join us, somebody comes to the door for sweets. Guaranteed. Is it a coincidence that you buy the same things for them that's your favourite? <laughs> There's no coincidence in that at all. It's just what would happen to be cheapest in the shop. Oh yeah, fair enough. You're not suggesting I would... I'm suggesting you would ration them. Front load the sweets. You may have one. <laughs> Put it in the hand. <laughs> yeah. You may have one. Give them a slap in. <laughs> Get off. Get off the mind. Get off. <laughs> what are they anyway? Tongue fastics or something? Uh, Whizzlers. <laughs> ah, there you go. Was that someone's dad or a child with a very deep voice? A very big child with a younger brother. Ah, uh, Chris's kids. That's what they are. Oh. Oh, yeah, I like them. I don't like Palmer violets. I've never had squashes before. I don't know what they are. Oh, they're lovely. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, no, I like all of them. Drumstick lolly, but soft. Double lollies are my favourite. Ooh, favourite. Excellent. Uh, you can probably. Uh... Oh, is the people here? <laughs> 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 Sorry, guys. It's it's um, Halloween tonight, and the kids are trick and treating. Yeah. <laughs> you can probably hear them actually. Uh, we don't we don't live really close to anybody, so we made a bit of an effort to get here. So it's only fair that we reward them with some sweeties. Oh, don't eat them all tonight. <laughs> what did she say? What did she say? I've got loads of sweets. Oh, well, that's good. So I said don't eat them all tonight. Oh, she will. She'll be up all night. Right, shall we get back in, in the real world? Yes. Of the live. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Sorry for the slightly delayed start, although I must say I was here at 10 to 6. Um, but as I say, it's Halloween. The kids keep coming for sweets, and that's that's great. Uh, I'm pleased that they do because we have sweets for them. Right tonight, um, it might look like we're just doing an exercise in colouring in here. In fact, really, that's pretty much what we are doing. But I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce you to something that I haven't used uh, on a live before. It's something that you may have at home. I don't know. Um, it's these things and they're called Winsor & Newton Pro Markers and they're alcohol markers. They evaporate very quickly. They have an awful lot of pigment in them. <coughs> Excuse me. And they just, uh, you use them in a slightly different way. <coughs> oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Um, to the way that you'd use felt tip pens or whatever. They're used a lot by uh, graphic designers and um, professional illustrators, that sort of thing. Acrylic marker, um, acrylic, Poscas are acrylic markers. Poscas are acrylic paint in a pen. They're brilliant um, for, for what they are and what you want to do with them. But these are slightly different. They're kind of more, almost a more grown up version, if you like. I wouldn't recommend that you get these for your kids for Christmas, for example. I think they're, I think they're, where is the camera today? Too close. There we go. Pro marker. Um, how much are these each? 265? Oh, yes, 250 to 299, something like that. Yeah, so, you know, they're not cheap, but they're great. Um, this, I'd love to tell you I've drawn this myself, but actually about 20 minutes to go till live time, I went on Google, I looked for an image. I wanted to do a fashion image 
um, but then I saw this and you know that I love flowers so that's what we're doing tonight we're gonna um, color this flower thing right before I start there's a couple of things if you want to go ahead with pro markers alcohol markers you need remember last time we were talking about the sort of paper that you need and various things need various types of paper uh, water um, watercolors they need um, generally a very thick paper I am using uh, Windsor and Newton pro marker alcohol markers sorry that's the dog he's gone mad because the kids are coming around um, yeah Windsor and Newton pro markers the alcohol markers they come in about 158 colors something like that uh, yeah they used to be they used to be called Letraset pro markers um, but they were taken over by Windsor and Newton and they've slightly rebranded them anyway I was talking to you about paper and I was saying that with watercolor if you're doing watercolors you need some really thick 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 paper and even then that's not the end of it because you can get smooth you can get rough you can get all sorts of watercolor papers I'm not a watercolorist so I'm not I don't really understand all the differences between the papers except to say that I wouldn't start watercoloring on copier paper for example because that wouldn't work you need to have something a bit more specialized than that um, there's also acrylic papers that you know canvases glory there's everything but for pro markers you need a specific type of paper because they are notorious for bleeding through whatever you put them on so uh, this stuff Windsor & Newton Pro Marker paper it's really thin it's so thin much thinner than copier paper I would say and sort of soft flexible but for some reason it doesn't allow the whatever's in it the Pro Markers don't bleed through it um, and you get a, a nice if you're looking for a blend you'll get a nice blend on this paper which you want on other paper because the alcohol ink will sink into it really quickly and you can't blend it out so if you're looking to go ahead with pro markers I think you probably also need to invest in a, a pad like this coming A3 as well if you want to do a really large one um, there are another type of alcohol markers called Copic markers, C-O-P-I-C markers, and they are, well, they're described as the Rolls-Royce of markers, but I can't see any difference, really. Maybe I don't use them enough to tell you that. If you opt to go down the Copic route, there is a Copic marker paper, but I'm sure both are equally as good. So this is uh, the image that I have printed out onto the marker paper. So it should be okay. The other thing that a lot of people do, if you go on YouTube and have a look at the videos of the um, markers, they do the the guts of the thing with the markers, and then they'll move on to coloured pencils, just to sharpen it up, just to give a bit more shade, highlight, whatever. And the other thing that I'd say to you before we start colouring is swatch your colors out because what they look like on the on the barrel of the thing actually i think that's probably quite a good one apricot it's pretty pretty close to what it is but a lot of them they just don't look like what they are when you swatch them out so swatch them out onto the paper that you'll be using otherwise it'll you'll get a distortion with that as well and make sure that you have it accessible to you whilst you're coloring because you you need to refer to lighter shades of a colour or darker shades of a colour or whatever so I've swatched all of mine out it's a lovely job I absolutely adore doing it so it takes me back to school days I think uh, so let's get cracking really um, I've decided the only thing I've decided about this is that I'm going to make these little berries blue I'm going to make them like blueberries bluey violet -y colour so I'm just going to have a look at my blue and violet colours and decide which which one I want. Hmm. That ultramarine's quite nice. Um, 
these are different markers again these are markers that I uh, got from China um, and I just wanted to try them I'd seen on YouTube that people were using them and saying that actually they're quite good so I'm just gonna I haven't really given them much of a try uh, that's the other thing I'm gonna need some sh some shading on some of this so I need a, a darker color than that which I haven't got so I'm gonna use the violet which I think might be that one violet and this ultramarine is a slightly darker shade I don't know if you can see that there the lights really not good um, so we'll start off with a lighter color which is the violet which is this one and pro markers have got two ends one is um, it's fairly stereotypical felt tip pen end and the other is a chisel end for larger areas these little uh, berries here they need to be really with the the smaller nib end and we'll just get going this you, you might recall I told you last week this is what I do in the evenings you know when, when I'm sitting watching the telly I um I either sketch out I usually sketch out something myself because I enjoy that part of it um and then I just sit and do this in the evening some people jigsaw some people do sudoku personally I pro marker and I enjoy it enormously maybe not get time to do all of this tonight um, because I want to show you how to shade it and how to you know use the colored pencils etc who have we got on anybody nobody Sharon's with us. Hi Sharon. CJ. Hello CJ, how are you? Paula. Hi Paula, thanks for joining. Carol. Hi Carol, Shaz. thank you. Shaz, hello Shaz. Olivia. Hello Olivia, thanks for joining. Karen, did I say Karen? Oh, no, Karen. <laughs> Karen's on an awful time with poor, poor chinchilla. He's been really poorly. I'll just do these berries then we'll come back and we'll do some shading and I'll get the coloured pencils out and show you the difference that that makes just just to these berries um, before we start on anything else it's so satisfying this it, it really is satisfying in the extreme hello Dorothy um, if you liked colouring as a child, this is kind of colouring but on steroids. I think the centre of each of these is probably going to be black, actually. Because if you think about little blueberries or whatever, I think, I, think, I don't know whether these are supposed to be flowers, but the blueberries are in my head. Well, the blue in the berries. Did you all see Paula's pumpkin today? Paula and Jess's. Oh my God, Jess. I bet you they're trick and treating, trick or treating, whatever you call it, uh, with the little ones. But she made a pumpkin that looked like Cinderella's coach. Karen says his Christmas parents for me arrived today. Ooh. He seems to ignore himself, although he still needs to eat more. Ah, he bought her some uh, fairy sheet, a fairy sheet gift pack. Oh. I know he's good, isn't he? He is. You just have to watch that, um, you know, take care that if you get really near the line, sometimes it can just 
drift over. It's all right with this pro marker paper. Um, obviously, it's you know it's made for that. But if you're using some other paper, just be careful because it will leak through across the line. And if you're doing you know whatever eyes, mouth, whatever it is, something like that, you can end up with a quite distorted person. Which is why eventually I gave in and bought, bought the Pro Marker paper. I don't think it was that awfully expensive, was it? Was it five or something? Uh, yeah, I think so. Is there 50 sheets in there? Where did I put it? Oh, yeah. 50 sheets, yeah. Daily Room, you do one as well, but they call theirs manga. Oh, yeah. Because people use them a lot for the Japanese. They do manga and anime. That type of thing. In fact, when you start looking at these and, and you know, to buy them, uh, a lot of the sets are described as manga or anime. I just wanted sort of general colours that I could use. Mo it's mostly fashion that I uh, colour. Yeah, sketch and colour. Can we come in at all or not? Uh, I'm sure I can come around you and do that. I mean, one of the reasons people buy the Copic ones, of course, is they are refillable. Yeah, that's a big difference. The, I mean, the they are the twice the price almost, but you can refill them. Whereas these, once they run out, they're for the bin, I'm afraid. Um, whereas the Copic, they sell the ink. Um, we, you know, it's not colour specific. They just sell the ink and you can fill your pen up um, and it makes it, then it makes it a much cheaper option. But they are about £4 odd, a pen. And, yeah, I don't know, it's just too rich for my blood, really. I couldn't justify it. And I can justify a lot, but I couldn't justify Corpix. So you see as it dries, the colour evens out. Whereas if you're using felt tip pens, you always get that line where you've gone. This does, it, you know, it doesn't happen with, uh, with alcohol markers. They sort of easily blend into themselves. And if you want a darker colour of the same shade, just go over it again uh, and lay some more ink down. Is one way. I find this a really, really restful thing to do. Um, which is important. I think it's important that we all have something to do that we find just just allows your brain some peace. The thing with this is you have to go from light to dark. You can't add light over the dark. You know, with acrylic, you can put dark down and you can put white over it if you want to. And the white will show up. Uh, with this, there is no white, a bit like watercolour, there isn't a white, and you really have to work, put your lightest colour down first, then put your shadows and darker colours on top. Every medium is different, it has its own um, way of, you know, of working with it. Down the bottom of you because you're just off the screen. I might want to move up a bit. I've got a cramp in my hand actually. And I think this must be. Is that one too? Yeah, I'd say it is. Which makes me think maybe they're not buried. But never mind. Oh, one down here. Like 
yeah it could be honesty it's not now it's purple <laughs> so this is uh dishonesty. dishonesty this is one of these uh touch five ones that came from china i'd like to tell you how much they were each actually where i can't remember um, um i know they were considerably less expensive uh, Doris, is it Hello Doris, haven't seen you for a while. Hope you're well. So right, so as with any painting that you do, there has to be some light coming at it from some, from some side. It could be coming from straight on, from the left, from the right or above. But once you decide where it's coming from, it comes from that direction for everything on that picture. So my face for example if the light was coming from this side this side would be brighter this side of my nose etc would be yeah down here would be darker uh you know all all down this side would be darker because it's in the shade here's where it would be bright and that would be the same for everything be the same for my arms my body everything um so you have to decide that and sometimes if you're um, a relative newbie it's a good idea to just put an arrow on the top where it's coming from so I'm saying my light is coming from that from there that's where it's coming from so this side of everything will be in shadow so let's just have a look um, this is the darker one this is the ultraviolet so I just want to make this just a little bit darker around this side And it's going to be darker under here anyway because it's under this one above it so you start to get some uh, cg wants to know what kind of ink you have in your printer i did a pick with ink that wasn't waterproof and the alcohol paint smudged it and i use waterproof ink uh, um, but we that's um, a laser isn't it laser printer we did it on a laser cj so it doesn't uh, for that express purpose actually yeah so it's dark under there because there's a shadow of the one in front of it it's darker down this side this one's just darker on the outside um this one's going to be dark down here because there will be a bit of shadow from there and this one once again there's nothing above it or on it or anything so it's just going to be around the outside going to be a little bit of a shadow there so this is a really good way of working out where your shadows should be because it's something that you will need to know it is a rule that cannot be broken because it'll just look daft if you do. CJ says thank you and Jacqueline's joined us with a smiley face. Hello Jacqueline, smiley face, it's nice to see. Maybe a bit of shadow under there. And this one will have shadow there and here. And then around there. So I'll have a bit of shadow under there. So it's just it's a really good way of working out where the shadow should be when you come on to do a, a painting in say acrylic or watercolor or whatever you need to know you need to know these things i think if i wasn't doing this as a live i'd perhaps take a bit more care over where my lights and darks are. So there we've got we've got some shading on those. This one it's going to be down the bottom and on this side like that I 
I'm not so sure that that will see me showing up. So I'm just, I'm just going to, it is, is it? I just want to make sure that that's looking nice and dark and appropriately shaded. I want them to look relatively 3D. Now, after I've got these coloured um, with these highly pigmented alcohol markers, I'll, I'm going to move on to uh, coloured pencils just to give them kind of like the finishing touch. If you don't start with the alcohol marker, you won't get that intensity of colour with just colouring pencils. You kind of need to you need to have this depth of colour down before you start. Um, I'm going to have to move some in here because I need to get my colour and pencils out. Could you move those just to... Right, so just a quick introduction. These are Faber-Castell Polychromos. Um, the, there's two main types of colouring pencils, adult colouring pencils. Uh, the Faber-Castell ones, and I cannot remember for the life of me what the other ones are. Um, these have been my choice and have always been my choice throughout my life. I love Faber-Castell things. It's a good job Paula's Georgia isn't watching because these are not in rainbow colour. Uh, they need sorting out, I think. Right, so though this is a large set of them. You get three trays. Lots of different colours for all sorts of things. Anything you could wish for, really. So, what colour do I need here? I need perhaps a lighter, a lighter colour over on this side, just to add to the three Dness. Because where I said you can't use um, the alcohol markers to add light, you can use coloured pencils, as odd as that may seem. So I need an appropriate colour. I do try not to put my pencils away when they need sharpening, but this one's... Let's just see if that, that's the right sort of colour. I think unless you really get in on this, I don't think you're going to see that. It's a nice mid colour. It's midway probably between the two colours that we've got. So I'm just putting that around the edge because I want it to look 3D. And then I want a lighter colour. All right, OK. Um, Right, okay, I don't think I need anything down there just now. Uh, so let's find a lighter colour that we think is going to work well. I think I think a pink might be the colour, this pinky mauvey colour. Let's try that and see if that works. When you're colouring... I'm not altogether convinced that's the right the right colour. Um, maybe something slightly lighter, that one, perhaps. When you're colouring, don't don't go about it the way kids do. Um, you know, just like that. Because you'll end up with just a load of lines. And worse than that, you probably indent the paper. Try and do it in sort of circles with very light pressure and you'll get a nice coverage without any of the indents or lines or whatever. So that's what we're aiming for and I think we've found the right colour now. I think this is helping to make it look 3D. But without that huge amount of pigment that the Pro Marker puts down 
This was just a very weak on its own, just just coloured pencil. As good as Faber Castell is and as much pigment as they have in them, it would just look very weak. So, you know, one of the best uses that you can do, although, you know, you can, of course, do masterpieces with just coloured pencils, but using them on top of pro markers is just fabulous. I think I think I might move on to a larger flower now and just because I think it might be easier for you to see. But they're they're beginning to look quite dressy. So I'll leave those out. Um it's a good idea when you're colouring if you've got a little tray or something beside you, keep the pencils out that you're using because once you put them back in there, you'll never be able to pick them out again. You go in, you think, yeah, I'll remember that. It was that very zesty gr green. And you look in and like, there's four zesty greens. Which one was it? So just leave them to, to the side and then you know, you know you've got them. I'll, I'll, I'll carry on. I'll finish off those myself because they're not showing up as good as I'd like them to. So let's choose um, let's choose a brightish colour. Um, let's do this flower. This is a big bright bright flower. So what should we use for that then? Well, I've got blues, but we've already got that one. I've got pinks, pinks maybe. Or oh, I don't know. Sometimes it's easy to choose when you haven't got so many, isn't it? Um, how about yellow? How about yellow? Nothing wrong with yellow. Right, so I'll leave my yellows out so I can see what choice I've got. Um, so I need a sort of lighter one and a, a darker one. So I'm thinking that I'll use pastel green, which doesn't look anything like a green. No, maybe buttercup and Canary, why not? Okay, so where are you? What's that? Ivory. Ivory, eggnog, pastel green. Yeah, I'll use that one then. Vanilla, buttercup, lemon, canary. What's the other yellow? Must be the one before that then, that must be it. Canary. This is the only thing you've got to go on, and it's a tiny, teeny weeny um, reference number. It's it's um, code letters there, and I can't see them to be honest from here. Uh, so I have to kind of have them in order of the order I've swatched them in, so I can go through it and pick out the pick out the colour I want. Right. So as before, we're going to start off with a lighter colour. Oh my. Oh my goodness, I'm not so sure I like that. Okay, that's going back in the box. What is that buttercup? Oh, that's lemon. Oh, God. buttercup. Ah, where's buttercup? Yellow. So much for you telling you I've got them in order. Gold. Buttercup! Hooray! Finally. Right, so I don't need that. I just want that canary. Right, I don't need them, so I'll put them back in order. Right, this that was a very strange colour. Truly, totally strange. So I'm just going to go over that. I'm using the chisel end. If you don't feel confident to use the chisel end, use the smaller one. You do get an awful lot of ink with this chisel end down in one go.
and they do smell if you've got a sort of um I mean, for example, I can't use oil paints because I'm asthmatic, but these these do smell. They, they have that alcohol sort of smell about them, but I don't find it um, intolerable at all. Right, so that's that's one layer of that. So if I want to deepen that, I can go back over that and just deepen it with the same with the same uh, pen. So it's that sort of two, two coats of it, if you like. And then if I want a dark colour again nearer the centre, I'll change to, to another one. And that's much more yellow. Let's give it much more of a yellow hue. So there we are, that's kind of that. Um, the centre needs to be something. I'd like to make the centre violet really, because it would stand out quite nice. So I won't just do that actually. I'm just going to use the small, the nib end of this. And if I need to get rid of that yellow, which I've um put in there i need to go over over it again and probably again actually to get rid of that but i'm going to move on to the crayons because I, I want you to see don't call them crayons to people honestly they'll get really upset they're colored pencils um and i'm just going to show you what what you can achieve with them so that's a nice light color there not doing very well on all my pencils being sharp So as I say, use it in circular motions. That's actually an unbelievably good match for that. It's so good that I'm sure you can't see it. Um, I'll just carry on because I want, I want that there. leave that out to one side so now I want a darker one possibly a sort of goldy type color maybe it's going to be one of these two I think uh, maybe this one so I want that further in towards the center I'll just bring it up to the edges slightly but still leaving the edges that nice pale colour. And it just it blends everything in. It gives it a, a much more polished appearance. But as I say, it's no good just trying to get that with coloured pencils alone. You need that real hit of pigment. Um, so that was that one. And I'm just going to use a sort of orangey one right in the centre. Let's see if I can get that darkened down just a little bit more towards the centre. You can see it does leave its pigment there. These are very highly pigmented colouring pencils. Um, you wouldn't if you nick the colouring pencils off your kids, for example, you wouldn't get this sort of, um, well, you wouldn't get this pigment left because they just don't have that amount of pigment in them. But if you just want to have a go, have a try, do it. You know, there's always cheap ways around things. It's just as I was saying last time, don't get disappointed if you don't get the results that you um, want with cheaper versions of things. It's not you, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just, so there, we can see what we've achieved now, hopefully, now that we've gone for really ultra bright colours. Um, I'll just go over that violet part in the centre. I 
Put some pigment down on that and then I want quite a darkish um, purple or blue even um, what have I got what's available to me oh, I'll go with a blue I think I like that one. That one, that's a dark purple and just as you know this side is our shadow side so I just want to make that slightly darker over on that side So there we are that's a yellow flower that's a bright yellow flower isn't it um so let's try the same thing on one of these what color shall we make those mr fix it any clue red pink green. i need my foliage in green though Pink, okay. Well, I've got I've got pinks everywhere. This is actually what takes up the most time is finding your colours, or, or for me anyway. I think if you had a more sort of slightly more organised system, because I've got all my in here, I've got all my complexion colours because I like to have them close by. But um, in here, I've got all my other colours, so um, thank goodness I've got them all swatched out anyway. So let's go for a, quite a pale pink. Pink mittens. What does that look like? Pink mittens. Pink carnation. You can help if you wish. It's definitely in that box, is it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Might be one of those actually. Gold blossom or pink mittens. Yeah, thank you. And the next one that I want is pink carnation, which I just saw before. Yeah, here. Right. So once again, we'll um, actually I'll use the little tip with these because they're itsy bitsy, aren't they? So this is a really light pink. Um, it's lovely actually. It's a very delicate pink. If you are doing something really fine, you can get different tips that you just push on the end. Yeah, you can. They're on, on there, I think. Um, and they're really, really tiny. Because sometimes when I'm doing the fashion ones, I want to put stripes on things. And you can't do it really with these. So that's my first layer down, this very, very dainty, delicate pink. Here's the, um, the, um, it's titchy, titchy, titchy. So that's an adapter, if you like. Um, just pushes straight on the end. Yeah, just, pushes. just pushes on there. And then it transfers through. So this is my slightly darker one. So I want this in further into the, the centre and as a shadow underneath where the petals going under something else needs to be slightly darker and keep your shading all to this side don't forget uh, caroline, can you hi caroline so that's the shading done on that i think you can see that so then it's time to move on uh, well, we need to put a centre in, don't we? I haven't even put the centres in my, uh, my thingamajigs yet. Let's go for black. Uh, Olivia says that she's been using some Sharpies, drawing simple but bright flowers. Yeah, so Sharpies she... are good. They're even, Sharpies are even better if you get this sort of paper. Because Sharpies have a habit of um, just staying where you put them and you can't blend the the mark that they made. You, end, you know, it ends up looking liney. But Sharpies are alcohol as well, aren't they? They must be. 
Right, so that's my centres in there, but I will go back over these ones and put... I'm going to put some black lines in the centre of the decided. Then that looks a little bit better. A bit more like the thing. Uh, so the centre of this I'm going to make um, yellow. Definitely needs to be a nice bright yellow for that pink. So there we are, it's got a nice bright yellow centre. So back over onto the crayons. Coloured pencils, guys. Don't call them crayons. You'll be arrested. You seriously, seriously will be arrested. <laughs> supposed to fix it, tread it on the toys, dog's toys. So I'm just going to go in just at the edge with this uh, sort of darker colored pencil <gasps> and emphasize that shadow there I'm not so sure that I need to emphasize anything more than that particularly I could find a middle ground one that's probably a middle ground there that one Come in a little bit, perhaps around the centre. Give these petals a bit of 3D ness. Right, well, I could carry on. Oh, I could carry on with the bowl. That's what I could carry on with. Uh, so, I'm going to make the bowl blue. I think yeah blue the only thing that I'll have a problem with is this uh, end berry here which but it's that's lilac it's not blue so let's do it blue and then we'll think about shading that because that's a good thing to think about how to shade that so what color should we choose um, cobalt blue is a nice one isn't it true blue is nice Aegean's lovely um, shall I use a G in? Shop is all, all yeah, I thought there must be. What colour is this? A G in. A G in. It was meant to be. There we go. So with the chisel end, because it's quite a large surface, this, I'm just I'm going to get what I can get with the chisel end. Wow, that's a nice colour. So I'm going to have to come back to uh, with a smaller nib. Don't be afraid of moving your paper around or your whatever it is that you're using. Don't don't be afraid to move it around. There's some sort of ridiculousness go, that goes around with uh, artists that you shouldn't be moving your your paper around. That's well, let's not keep it clean and say it's rubbish. Karen says she's got lots of sharpies. Who has? Karen says she's got lots of sharpies and so does Paula. Yeah, sharpies. I think I think they Yeah, we have one or two. I, I think they only come into their own, to be honest. Well, I mean they're great for marking things forever and stuff like that but I think they on this sort of paper where you can blend them I think they're I think they're coming to their own so I'm just going to get the other uh, the finer tip out I'm impressed with you guys for staying with me because I didn't think you'd find this that exciting it's probably better watching me than washing the dishes or something no way Has said earlier that she's got friends staying all week unexpectedly, so she's hiding in the bedroom to watch. Oh, friends staying. Well, fortunately, I mean, unfortunately, of course, I mean, unfortunately, we don't have any room to put people up. Such a shame. Such a shame. 
I mean, we were trying to make inroads into the, the spare bedroom, um, as you know. <laughs> just, I don't know, it's just not happening. So this is a very, 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 very pretty colour. You know, some gorgeous adult colouring books out there. Um, the problem I have is that I can't use my pro markers with most of them because the, 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 they just they won't blend on it. Right, so that's that pretty much done. I could go back over it a little bit where I've um, just blend that in a little bit better. right then so now we need to think about shading it etc etc so i could go in with a darker version of that um which would be petrol blue and i might just do that seems like a sensible thing to do um that's petrol blue there so let's just have a look at where the there are definitely shadows. So there's definitely going to be shadows under these. The light's coming from here. So there's going to be shadows under here. So let's put some, some shadows in there. Because that's not in dispute at all. And under the flowers. Hope I've persuaded you all to, uh, to have a have a go, even at the very least, if you have a go with your um, coloured pencils, even if you nick them off the kids. Seriously, it's a really um, relaxing thing to do. Really is. And heaven knows we all need a bit of relaxation. I don't know. Life seems to have gone a bit bonkers of late. We. The weeks just whiz past ridiculously quickly. Is it is it just us or so, you wanted to know, do these fade in the sun or are the pens good for longevity or whatever you say please? Light fastness, I guess, is the uh... light fastness. Um, I don't know because I haven't looked it up. I would be amazed if they're not. Do you believe they are light fast? Let Mr. Fix it, look it up, and then we'll get the answer. I mean, this is a reputable company we're talking about here. We don't want to catch common. <laughs> um, so you can see that the, the shadows are building up a little bit here, they're making it look a little bit more real. Uh, I think this bit up here would probably be in shadow from somewhere. I'm not sure where. The problem is with buying pro markers when you first set off buying them, you know, they, I think they come in packs of 12, I seem to recall. And, you know, you get like manga, anime, landscape, whatever. The problem is that you, with that, you probably only get one green or two greens or something. And it's not enough, so you have to buy more than one pack, and then it becomes really, really expensive. Well, that's looking quite pretty. We need to go in with our um, colour pencils, of course. Um, I just need my Aegean, first off. Uh, according to Winsor and Newton, 
Yeah. The, uh, they use pigments in their pens rather than dye. Ah, so that's what the um, that's what the number is then, the pigment colour. Pigment number, yeah. Mm. Uh, the ink is there for light pass, meaning your work will stay vibrant for 100 years. Hey, go, Caroline. <laughs> 100 years is good enough for you. So the, it was Olivia that was... That's oh, it was Olivia, I'm sorry. So, you know, in 100 years' time, somebody will be looking at your work going, Oh, she was good. Oh, no. So with this, I'm just going to leave an area where the light would have caught it. Um, I'm not getting really fancy with myself, I don't think. Just that there would be an area. I should have left an area there as well, to be uh, brutally honest with you. But I didn't, I forgot. So that's that. So you can see that the light would be hitting that there. It would also be hitting it about here. And I really, really, really should have left a gap for that there. Um, but I didn't. Let's see if we can do this with a chisel end. It'll be much quicker. No, they're lovely, but they're addictive. That's the problem with them. Like I don't want to go to bed until I finish my picture sort of thing. That's the fume. <laughs> you think it's the fume? <laughs> <laughs> well, it possibly is. I don't drink alcohol, but I'm, I use my alcohol markers every night. There we go, so uh, just need to think about shading that. So back to this one, which is the darker blue, the petrol blue, and there will be, a, ooh, wrong end. There will be a shadow down here from the ball itself, and it will run down this side, all the way down to the foot pedestal whatever there'll be a shadow around here and there will just be a little bit around the, the actual outside and under that uh, berry thing right so there we are so looking groovy looking groovy right back to the pencils it's not finished till you've got to go with the pencils because that really, am I running out of time? I am. I'll, I'll just quickly do this as quick as I can. It's a turquoisey sort of colour that I'm looking for. Um, mm -mm. That one, maybe. I don't know. With all those colours that I think, is there 72 in there or something? I don't know. I've got loads of colours, but. The Fabric Style. The Fabric Style, yeah. 120. 120. Guaranteed. Yeah, I've got the colour that you want. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to bring a bit of shading into here. You're just trying to add a bit of 3D-ness, that's all. So it will be sort of darker at the sides, coming into a sort of lighter patch where the light's hitting it. And if you notice, I'm holding my pencil like that. Um, that way then I can just kiss the paper with the whole length of the um, lead or call it whatever. So just where the dark meets the other, the lighter colour, that's where you need to be putting some pigment on. You're not trying to blend these colours. You, you won't blend them. They're too strong. But just bring them together really. Is that what blend means? I think so. So yeah, you're trying to blend them then. I'm not sure you can see that, but I'll put a lighter colour on in the middle and I'm sure you'll see that then. Let's bring this down both sides slightly 
slightly darken it and leave this the center part where we're actually going to put a lighter lighter shade of pale um what color can i have i don't know yeah i'll try this one see what happens that's that's quite light actually but it's i think it's probably about right Yeah, I think we're all right with that. So can you see that, that we've now actually got something that looks like it's got form? Maybe needs just blending out a little bit there. It looks fine to me, but it looks pretty stark on the camera. So I'll just blend it out a little bit. So yeah, I mean, it looks like it's in shade at the top where the flowers are coming over the, the rim of it. These two look like they're forming the sides of the vase. And this here looks like it's it's coming forward. So we've got a, we've built a roundness, if you like. And this is the light color again, because this part here is quite light. Um, as I said, I, I did make a boo-boo I made a boo-boo um, that should have had some uh, real highlights in it too if I really wanted to I could use Posca I could use Posca pens to put two highlights in there I might I'm thinking about it yeah but they're quite uh, little I need if I'm going to do it I need something with a bit of gusto so I'm just putting a bit of light round there. Oop. Right. Uh, where's my lovely... I just don't want that line at the bottom. Oh, I came off, came off the bottom. Right. So can you see then now? You can. I can. Um, the flowers, yeah, I appreciate they were difficult for you to see, but I think even now you can see there's a bit of shading on them. Uh, but this, the bowl that they're in, you can see the lighter colour, pro marker, the darker colour, and then the real highlights that we added, and low lights that we added with the coloured pencils. So I have enjoyed that. I appreciate it wasn't the most exciting thing in the world. Let me give you an update on Santa. He is, uh, uh, yeah, but he's a bit big. But I'll, I'll have to zoom out. He'll have to zoom, zoom, zoom out. He'll have to go upstairs. Um, I'll, I'll just show you where I'm up to with him. Zoom out. Okay. Oops. There we go. He's a giant fellow. Oh, sorry. Oh. Right. There he is. I've done all these boots and his bottom trousers and his white fur down there. I've done his belt. Uh, I've done his hat. I've done his sack. And I've done the toys in the sack, apart from Mickey's face and the doll's face. They need sort of, um, finishing off. I haven't done them. Uh, and then there's Santa's face. But you can see he's coming along. And if you missed out what we were doing, uh this huge humongous santa for it's because paula from fairy chic emporium threw down a challenge uh for convert uh, make altering toilet rolls to you know the middle bit not the entire thing um and so i've altered a few actually i've only altered two so far but i'm going to make an advent calendar i'm going to hang them up by this little loop here I fix them to that gigantic uh, Santa Claus so we're going to have an advent calendar and when you've taken all of these down you'll see Santa that's the theory um, so <laughs> I've got a list of things to do that is so long you wouldn't believe it uh, so that's basically the advent calendar what else is going on what else are we doing the box yeah let me show you this box now it's finished 
it just needs the the hinges screwing on and the bit on the front um, but this is a really nice what they call burlap hessian whatever um, rolls that are found in uh, the range pack of six of them and I absolutely adore it it's gorgeous and I just gathered some cotton lace up with a needle and thread uh, gathered it up so as it could sit down on that you're having a bad night tonight aren't you mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and these th these things with the hearts on I don't know when I'll say four years ago five years ago Mr. Fixit went through a phase of buying, um, not junk jewellery, what do you call it? Costume. Costume, excuse me, costume jewellery um, from the auction. I, I don't really know why, unless you're <laughs> feeling like he had a penchant to wear some, maybe. Um, but he was coming back with box after box after box of it, and I couldn't bring myself to throw it out. I just knew at some stage some of those beads and pearls and whatever would come in useful and one of the things was this and I've no idea what it was it was just three hearts and two hearts strung together on a bit of leather I have no idea what it, what its purpose was but I used this decoupage napkin this napkin for decoupage I should say and I don't know if any of you have got this one but it is a really strange color it's not pink and it's not red and wouldn't you believe it these were exactly the same color so I've uh, put them on I've put a frame on and gilded it a little bit uh, with a bird in in the background I have um, put some um, goldy stuff there and some lace all the way around the, the bottom uh, what else have I done to it yeah well the crackling I showed you the crackling last time by accident you know quite serendipitously i i decoupaged my box and i didn't like it it was the bottom line of it it was too dull so i thought well i'm gonna to have to lighten it up somehow so i put a coat of of uh, finishing stuff on it left it to dry while i was thinking about what i wanted to do with it and thought i'll crackle it i'll put some crackle on so I put some of um, Paula's Crackle, very chic, um, very chic paint Crackle on it, quite a thick coat, and I left it to dry, left it to its own devices to dry. And then when I put the very chic paint over the top, this is Sen over the top, it crackled for Britain. I mean, look at that. It's br gorgeous cracks. I love it. So, um, yeah, that's that box. It's got gilding round the side, blah, blah. It's fairly it's standard fare from me. I think probably um, but we might on Thursday we might do another box if you want to if you don't want to let me know and we'll do something else it's uh, Monday then <laughs> told you the time was flying past so is there anything else that I need to tell you anything going on in my life that you need to know about no don't think so it's pretty dull really it's good I like it being dull dull is good so happy Halloween I hope if you've been out with the kids or you're going out with the kids that you had a really fun time, uh, they deserve it. And I'll see you on Monday. Thanks very much for joining me. I, I appreciate it as always. Thanks very much. Bye.